context of this. Let me just say as we start out, that, that's a great song. You need, if you've never heard that song or, or listened to it on the radio or don't have the CD, go on uh, YouTube or somewhere and listen to that whole song. It's full of theology, that song. I, I love that song. I played that in our Sunday school class, and we actually went through the song verse by verse and then mashed up the scriptures that, that went with each verse of that song. It, it's a great, it's a great song. Fear binds you. Faith sets you free. Fear always binds you. Fear says what I don't want to happen is going to happen, and it just binds you. It just puts you in chains. Faith says what I want to happen is going to happen because God said so. Fear is the opposite of faith. So don't live in fear. God wants to set us free from that fear. Look in your Bibles, 2 Peter, and I'm going to read the first, actually the first four verses we looked at last week, and then we're going to look at the next verses. Notice what Peter says. Simon Peter, he's a bondservant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. To those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Underline that verse. The way we grow is by knowing God and Jesus better. Getting to know Him better and better. Read it again. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Here's the word again, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Let me pray for us and we'll read on. Lord, we thank you for these verses. We thank you that we've been made partakers of the divine nature, which is an awesome thought. Part of, of the privilege of knowing you is to have you dwelling in us, in the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, something that we have a hard time wrapping our mind around and understanding. We thank you for your great and precious promises that you have given to us that cause us to escape the corruption that is in the world caused by evil desire. But help us tonight, Lord, to add to our faith these character qualities that will make us better in serving you as followers of you. And people will see our behavior, our action, and they will know it's because we believe and we trust in you. Actually, Lord, we know it's you living your life through us. We pray that we would be those kind of vessels tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, look in verse number four. And notice why we read those verses so that we can understand verse 5. By which have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But for this very reason, for this very reason, because you have those great and precious promises, because you've escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, giving all diligence... Add. Notice, do you see it? Giving all diligence. And I wrote in the margin of my Bible, what does diligence mean? It means to heed, to give attention to, to give thought to, to be mindful of, to be alert to. It means you, you're going to work hard at this. You're not just going to slide. You're going to give diligence. You're going to heed. You're going to give attention, thought. You're going to set your mind to it, and you're going to be alert. What do you add? You add to your faith. Look at these qualities, and I call these the Paul, uh, Peter's fruits of the Spirit. You know, Paul has his fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5.22. This is Peter's list, and some of them are identical. Notice what he says. Add to your faith virtue. To virtue, knowledge. To knowledge, self-control. To self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. Seven in his list. 
Verse number 8, for if, if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted. It's an ophthalmology term. It means you can't see far away, even to blindness, and forgot and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and your, your election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Look at that phrase right there. If you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now look at what he says. We're going to go ahead and read a few more verses. I put a few extra ones in. Here's what Peter's saying, and I'm saying it to you guys as well. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, even though you know and are established in the present truth. And you probably wouldn't be here tonight. You'd be somewhere else doing something else, but you want to be here to grow in your faith. So you already know some of this. That's what he's saying to them. You already know this stuff. But he wants to remind you. And he says this. He says, I think it's right, as long as I am in this tent, in this body, to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as the Lord Jesus Christ showed me. In other words, he knew he was getting ready to die. He knew he was not going to be with him that much longer. By the way, that's not why I'm sharing this message. I'm not, speak, I'm not speaking that, by the way. I'm just giving you the background, all right? A little humor there. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. Now it's getting comical as I read these verses. All right, listen, guys. The reason you're still here, the reason you have lived as long as you've lived is because God is not through conforming you to the image of Christ. After you came to know Jesus, you were born again, you were given a new life, you were transformed, you became a new person, a new creature in Christ, but that's not the end. And I think sometimes we think that. I, I, I'm, in, I'm going to heaven, so I'm safe. But no, God wants you to grow. And only the person that knows grows. And I'm going to be saying that over and over. Only the person that knows grows. You must know God in order to grow into his likeness. You must know Jesus and get to know him better and better and better so that you know what he likes and what he doesn't like. And so as we went through a long, long series so that you can hear his voice and do his will. Now, we're going to walk through some of those character traits, but I want you to look at this word with me. Well, by the way, what is character? I looked it up online, and this one website gave me like 31 things, and I said, Lord, we can't do that. We just got seven here. We can't do 31. But look, at, go back to the previous slide, not that one right there. Back to the previous slide. Keep going back. There we go. Our character. This word, and I want you to turn to Hebrews while I'm talking in chapter number one, and I'm going to turn as well. Just turn left in your Bible to Hebrews chapter number one. What is character? Now, you know what the leadership gurus tell us it's honesty, it's integrity, it's reliability, it's transparency, it's all those things that people look at in leaders. But in the Bible, the word character means an engraved mark or an imprint. It's something that has been engraven in stone or something else. That's the New Testament meaning. In the 1600s, it came to mean the defining qualities of a person, which that's what we look at today. And then in the latter 1600s, it came to mean a part that you play, like in a we would say in a movie or in a play or in some sort of a drama. You, you say, well, he plays that character very well. But you guys know that those movie actors are acting. You know, they're, they're, they're really not necessarily like that. But some characters fit the lines that they read and the part that they play better than others. So movie directors find actors 
that really reflect those characters that they play. But I want you to read with me in the New Testament so you understand what this word character means. In verses 1 through 3 of Hebrews, the Bible says, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, or through his Son, to whom he has appointed heir of all things. Notice this phrase, and remember what we talked about this morning. Through whom he also made the worlds, or the eons of time, or the universe. He made it through Jesus Christ and his word. Who being the brightness of his glory, here's the word, and the express image of his person. Jesus is the character of God. Listen to me real carefully. This is the message. This is what we need to know. Jesus perfectly reflected the character of God. That's why Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and the Father are one. He is the engraved mark. He is the imprint of the God that's invisible. This is an amazing revelation from the New Testament. Notice what the Bible says. He upholds all things by the word of his power, and when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus is our goal, if you will. He's the one we're looking at. He's the one we're being transformed into the image of. He's the mark. He's the character that we want to reflect. Jesus never sinned one time, ever, because God doesn't sin. Jesus was loving because God is love. Jesus forgave because God forgives. And in that one instance, one of my favorite verses where Jesus tells that man on that pallet, son, your sins are forgiven. And those religious leaders just went nuts. They just went nuts and he says, you think I'm just talking here? You think I'm just talking? What's easier to say? Your sins are forgiven? Not anybody can say that. But how many of you can say, get up and walk? And he just says, get up and walk. And that guy just, boom, he gets up and walks. He demonstrated that he was deity, God in the flesh. But what was more important than all the miracles, and he did the miracles because they didn't believe his words. He said, if you don't believe my words, believe the miracles. You know, at least take a look at me. But what was so amazing about Jesus was his character. I would have loved to listen to his teaching, but we're doing that, are we not, in the New Testament when we read about Jesus? But to, to listen and have the tenor of his voice, to have the presence of Jesus, the real presence of Jesus we have through the Holy Spirit, you guys know that. It's not a carbon copy, it's the real Jesus that lives in us. But to really sit at his feet and to see the character of him coming out of his humanness would have been awesome. So don't forget what our purpose is here. Notice verse number three again. This is in the ESV version. He is the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint of his nature. That's really clear. I like that. He's the radiance of his glory and the exact imprint of his nature. That's what that word express image in the New King James is translated into ESV. He is exactly who God is. That's why Jesus said, if they reject you, they reject me. If they reject me, they reject the one who sent me. It's really serious when someone rejects the witness because that means they reject the Jesus. And sometimes we're not good witnesses, I know that. And if they reject Jesus, they reject the God who sent him. Total equality with the Father. The Father is worshipped all the way through the Old Testament. Jesus is worshipped all the way through the New Testament. And he never says, don't do that. That's only reserved for God. Why? Because he is God. He is God. Okay, these 